We're going to be joined now by Bronwyn Maddox, who's the Director of the Institute for Government. Thank you very much for coming down to Good Westminster morning. to see us this morning. So, as, as Louise mentioned there, getting what he wants to, to do through Parliament it's going to be a huge challenge for, for anybody, and, and particularly this new Prime Minister. I think that's understating it. I mean, it, 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 it may be impossible. We'll have, to, we'll have to see. He has this tiny majority, uh, majority which may be only two, and one, one defection could then wipe that out. And he's, what he's going to try and do, I think, is avoid bringing any legislation to Parliament, because that gives his opponents, people like Dominic Grieve on the Conservative side or Keir Starmer on the Labour, a chance to try and bring amendments that would block no deal. So he's got to try to do his negotiations with the EU and avoid, uh, to the extent he can, dealing with Parliament or bringing legislation he doesn't need coming to Parliament. Because that gives power to the politicians it gives, here. It gives a, a, route in, a route in to MPs who are saying, look, we're Parliament, uh, you can't shut Parliament out of this, but they need actually a technical manoeuvre, something like a piece of uh, legislation to try and uh, bring their objections to a head. That's very interesting. He's been absolutely clear, hasn't he, recently about the October the 31st deadline. Is that set in stone? This is a really good question. I mean, I, I think in normal speak you would say that Boris Johnson has been um, emphatic that October mm. 31st, as he said, do or die. But he didn't say do or die yesterday when, uh, when he'd just uh, been uh, given the top job. And what we need to find out in the coming weeks is how much wiggle room there might be about it. Now, the EU has always made clear there might be something, a technical extension, more time to allow Britain to prepare for no deal. And as they point out, no deal actually just means we'll have to do a deal with the EU after that. So you, you can hear sounds on, on the EU side pointing out there's wiggle room if Britain wants to take it. But what we don't know is how Boris Johnson is going to play the politics of that. Mm. You, you mentioned the word impossible. Just listening to you there, I'm sure our viewers are probably think, thinking the same thing. How on earth do you get anything through when you don't want to bring legislation before Parliament because you, you fear an amendment which will then reduce your power, and yet at the same time you're trying to negotiate perhaps the most important uh, thing that we've had to do anything like this in this country for so many years, at the same time when Parliament are thinking you're going to try and circumvent the processes, in actual fact, if he goes through the processes, he won't be able to do what, he, what he's trying to do. It's all, it, is, it is impossible. That's the best word to describe it, no, isn't it? No, it, it may not be. I mean, there is going to be a, a, Boris, a bit of a Boris bounce, if you like. We, what we're waiting to see is how long that goes on. And political charisma is a real commodity. Um, it's a real thing. Um, I, I saw Boris Johnson, actually, ha as it happens, in a small Welsh uh, uh, churchyard, I mean, some it's, it's it's months ago. And they were kind of, kind of a frisson that went through these uh, sheep farmers and then someone saying, mm, you know, could he be the next prime minister? It's a, it's a real thing. So there's a question of how much he can just talk his way through. But the real deadlines coming up are to do with the EU and needing to get a position clear. Um, so he's effectively been made Conservative leader and now will become Prime yes. Minister, voted by just over yes. 90,000 people. What about an actual general election when everybody gets a vote? Well, there are voices in the media today saying uh, he should go for one immediately. But I must say I think that that is very risky from his point of view. He's still got Nigel Farage's um, immensely successful, suddenly successful Brexit party there. Mm -hmm. And until or unless Boris Johnson uh, delivers uh, Brexit, that is going to be a real force. So he would see, uh, he could expect to lose all kinds of votes there. Could he try and do some formal deal with them? Well, that's really quite ambitious. Um, and, you know, he's wanted this job, as we understand, for a long time. To have it for maybe only uh, days or weeks would seem quite a painful thing. Mm. My guess is that he's going to try uh, the more conventional route, which is to uh, try to put together some kind of deal with the European Union, see whether he can come to terms with them, or, or come back to the UK uh, and say, no, that didn't work at all, but at least try that route. But okay. I could be wrong. You know, there, there, are, there are people saying he's got no alternative. Uh, Bromham Maddox, really good to talk to you. Thank you very much My for pleasure. your analysis. Thank you.